My soul magnifies the Lord, for I have the strangest sensation of being in two places at the same time. I can see the dust motes dancing in the early morning sunbeams, which are poking their way through shutters and bringing to a burnish the rich terracotta tiles on my floor. I can feel the chill pinch of the March mist still to be scattered by the warmth of the sun. I can hear the first stirring of bees buzzing outside my window, gathering nectar from the myrtle and rue. I can smell their scent rising. And yet, I can also see, suffused through all this, the golden shimmering of somewhere else. It reminds me of the way Zechariah describes the temple sanctuary when he visits. Robes and incense and altars and gold and jewels and tapestry and singing and the ringing of a clear, true bell. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. It is hazy, but not him. He is more solid and present than anything or anyone I have ever known. But when he speaks, it sounds as if he is calling loudly from a great distance. A greeting from God. He is with me. He chooses me. Am I now to die then? I know from the scriptures that no one can see God and live, and that those who are dedicated to the Lord are put to death unless they are redeemed by the death of a lamb. I fall to my knees and place my burning brow on the cold clay tiles in homage to the presence of the Lord my God, who always holds my life in his hands, and I wait, hot, pounding. But the angel speaks to me the words they always speak, and now I know why. Do not be afraid. God's choosing does not mean that I am chosen for death. Quite the opposite. I have been chosen to bring life. He has looked with favour on the lowliness of his handmaiden. My heart's beating has hardly lessened, but I feel emboldened to lift my head and hold the angel's intense gaze with a curious eye. For surely, henceforth, all generations will say, I am blessed. The Lord my God wants the body that he has created and the life force with which he has filled it to become the home for a while of his own son. Instinctively, I find myself placing my hands on my body, gently touching where in other women I have felt the movement of the miracle of life. My stomach feels the sharp cold of my fingers through the woven fabric. My hands feel the warm, dark depths, fecund, ready. My son, growing within me, the king. He that is mighty will magnify me. Holy is his name. But what happens now? How can this be, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon me? O oh, my betrothed, my Joseph, what will you make of this? The power of the Most High will overshadow me, so that the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. My love, you must remember that our God's mercy is on them that fear him. 
and you do fear him, I know, and we will receive his mercy together as this child grows. And future generations too, all who make a place for him in the womb of their hearts. It seems that nothing is impossible with God. I knew that in my head, but here in the room I have grown up in, so much a part of me that I feel a flood of fondness for every small thing. I am hosting here one of the hosts of heaven who is reflecting the shimmering power of the Most High, as a full moon does the brightness of the sun. It renders God visible for this snatch of eternity and throws me into clarity before him. What do I see? I see that I'm no warrior. It is God who shows strength with his arm. I simply offer the gift that I am. I see that I'm no celebrity. God scatters those. But here he is, lifting up the lowly. I, I see that I'm not rich. But God is always satisfying my deepest hunger. And here I am at the crux in this moment of the mercy of God to his people, promised to Abraham and throughout all generations. What then shall I say? Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word.